Yo, what's good, everybody? We're back for episode two. We've got to finish our top to bottom breakdown of these. My favorite picks in the round per round of best ball drafts right now. Today, we're covering nine through 10. So let's get that trailer started. All right, everybody. So glad to have you back. I'm glad we can finish this out because I... I can't wait to talk about these players. Oh, round 10 is going to be glorious. I've already talked about them a little bit. Before we get to that, if you are a first-time player and you want to come join in all the fun, Underdog Fantasy over there, FF Advice, is that great code to use for all first-time players. And again, if you haven't subscribed, click the bell, come hang out with us on the Fantasy Football Advice Network. I've got this show. I've got my show with Brendan, Too Much Fantasy Football. And then, of course, Operation Domination, the Fantasy Forecast, Kyle and Corey, and many more, all on the Fantasy Football Advice Network. Let's get going. I get it. I've got a problem. Save your comments. Say, shh, shh, nope. I, I don't want to hear it. I get it. I have a problem. I, I've gone to talk to somebody. I had to talk to somebody else because they agreed with me. We've got to figure this out. But Tajay Spears. Ooh, this man. Round 10. I cannot stop taking him. It's just an amazing grab for me. I know we've already covered three of the running backs right now in these early rounds, but Tajay Spears as a great cleanup, a running back two, running back three, has been an amazing pivotal piece for my builds this year. I'm not a big fan of Pollard. I know he had he got paid this year coming into it, but it's not a situation I love for him. I'd rather take the younger guy, the cheaper guy, the guy that now has a brand new left tackle on that offensive line. The team with a brand new head coach who brought in his dad to coach the offensive line because he's one of the best in the NFL. I'm so excited to see what we get here. There's so many passing weapons as well, so this offense should be able to move. So we've made it to round 11, and this is the part where the player really depends on your build. We're still trying to make sure we hit those thresholds. Do we have enough wide receivers by round seven, by round nine? Do we have enough running backs? Are we eyeballing that second quarterback if we've already taken the first? Or do we have a plan for quarterback at all if we haven't taken one? But there's several players going in this round. The running backs, Nick Chubb, Chase Brown, Austin Eckler, Blake Corum, Ezekiel Elliott. None of them move the needle for me. I can get their younger counterpoint either around below or above this. So not a fan there. Jared Goff, Trevor Lawrence, they're great cleanup quarterbacks, but I kind of take them more depending on the stack or if I can get them a little later. So wide receivers going with Dontavian Wicks is Brandon Cooks, Jerry Judy, Jacoby Myers. Love this pick. Uh, Green Bay is going to be just a an offensive powerhouse this year and not having to pick when he plays, so playing him in redraft. I love the idea of having him in best ball having Christian Watson if he's good if he's not you know that that hamstring may not hold up Jordan Reed clearly cannot be just the guy they lean on for everything so we're gonna have to have help coming out of other places and round 11 Dontavian Wicks a great pair with Jordan Love and ancillary pieces moving on down this list I've noticed we've got a lot of running backs here I am very prone to taking wide receivers early I don't take a lot of running backs but I wanted to make sure I grabbed a lot of my favorites as we went through this so that's why we got a lot of RBs here, but there's not very many that really, really excite you. And I think that we've got league winning upside, obviously sprinkled in down here somewhere. And Marshawn Lloyd might be a piece of that. Josh Jacobs came in on a big, hefty contract, but we also know that Matt LaFleur is a huge fan of running multiple running backs. This is the guy that had Deion Lewis running wild when he shouldn't have. Derrick Henry shouldn't have got the ball. That's beside the point. Uh, Marshawn Lloyd can catch the ball. He's versatile. This guy can move back there. So I think he will be a well-used piece in this offense, especially in the back half of the year when you're grabbing these running backs to clean up for the ones that may have gotten hurt. Marshawn Lloyd's a nice little lottery ticket for you here in round 12. So now we're getting to the point of the draft where I like to really clean up my correlation. Did I take a quarterback early? Am I taking one way late? Am I? Do I have the pieces that are necessary to make sure that I've got some of these stacks? And Jalen Polk, one of the two rookie receivers that the Patriots took, potentially could end up as the number one receiver for this team. You've got Juju Smith-Schuster. You have K.J. Osborne. You've got Demario Douglas. You've got uh, Kendrick Bourne. So many wide receivers on this team. Why not? Uh, Thornton. Thornton from a, a few years ago. So many bets to place here. Why not take the guy that went early in the second round, first-year player with this regime? Like you don't get very many opportunities in round 13 to potentially take a number one for the offense. Does he start off hot? Probably not. But there's possibilities there. You know, we have to see this rookie quarterback for the Patriots to pass it to someone. So Jalen Polk for the Patriots, I think it's a great snag here in round 13. Oh, hey, Deshaun, throw it here. Okay, fine. You're just pissed about that joke I made earlier, huh? But anyway, we're gonna, we are gotta grab another quarterback. QB 22, 
This guy's fallen drastically from where he was being taken last year, and for good reason. He's been hurt or hasn't finished of any of the last three seasons that he's played. He gives you upside, though, and that's what we want to see. After QB 22, you're not really going to see a lot of guys that can, can break out. We've gotten smarter as fantasy football players. We know to get people that can run. And Deshaun Watson might not be what he used to, but he can still move a little bit, and he had decent games last year. So so I think he's a great snag with, as a second quarterback, especially being able to correlate him with pieces like Najoku and Cooper, who you can take in the mid-rounds. I know, there goes viewership. Round 15, it's ugly. It's ugly for everybody, so let's just ride with it. Tyler Conklin here, tight end 22. I'm struggling, really struggling this year to find late tight ends. Hunter Henry was somebody I was kind of on early, but his ADP keeps jumping up. Love to stack him, but his average draft position continues to move. Tyler Conklin, somebody who's dropped off a little bit. I like the idea of pairing him with Aaron Rodgers if I'm going late QB or if he's my second quarterback, but I don't mind it here. You can build the narrative in your head of where you see Tyler Conklin finishing with four to six touchdowns and enough catches and yardage to make him fantasy viable to fill in for that elite tight end. Really don't like plug and play tight end this year. It's gross. There's guys like uh, Kate Ottens right around here. Isaiah Likely, Noah Fant, Chica Conquo. This year feels a lot more like rolling the dice, buying a lottery ticket for the tight end position versus really digging in to find those gems. I don't know if we're going to find a consistent gym this year. Roshan Johnson's coming up in the round 16. Could be the second, could be the third guy, but he's a young running back, and that's what I want to bet on. We got to see flashes of him last year. Him and Khalil Herbert was in the backfield. They brought over DeAndre Swift. But all going into last year, we were talking about, oh, injury concerns, injury concerns, this, this, and that. And one year with the Eagles, and it just washes away. Now, this offensive line has improved in Chicago, but it's not what the Eagles had. So a great chance Roshan Johnson can work himself into the rotation, and he's a pass catcher. So when I have to pick between him and Khalil Herbert, let me take Roshan Johnson, the young guy. Herbert's on his way out last year, the contract. Oh, look at that. We drew another quarterback. Round 17, Drake May. Talk about sneaky upside. This guy's got a little bit of wheels. If he finishes with two, three, 400 yards this year, I wouldn't be completely surprised. They have a lot of mediocre wide receivers in this room. So if he has to make a little bit of happen, if he has to run a bit because of these rookies, because of these players developing, I, I think it's completely in the realm of possibilities. And that's what we're shooting for late, late in the draft. Does he have some sort of league winning ability? I say league winning, comparable to... To, to what you're paying for. Getting him possibly with your last pick, second last pick, he is a great stack with some of these early, early quarterbacks. Because if you take Kyler, Anthony Richardson, if you take Lamar, there's no reason that you need to take another quarterback until late. So get Drake May. We just talked about Jalen Polk, Hunter Henry we touched on. Tons of pieces that he has that you could correlate for to get some sort of late round stack. All right, and hold tight, folks. we got to make it through this last one. Round 18 is here, and I've got Darius Slayton. He's my guy right now. Whether it be him or Jalen Hyatt, I'm okay with either one. But taking a Giants wide receiver very, very late in the draft, we're all expecting Malik Neighbors to be the number one. Maybe it doesn't happen week one. Maybe it takes a handful of weeks. So grabbing a vet, a guy that's been here a handful of years, whether it be Darius Slayton or Jalen Hyatt, I think both of those guys have an ability to stack with a Drew Locke or a Daniel Jones if you want to grab one of those as well to give you that late correlation because Neighbors is only going to do so much for the team. He's not going to do everything. You know, they have to pass it around somewhere else. So, so it's not a terrible bet to grab here in round 18. Well, that's all I have for you today, folks. I can't thank you enough for joining me for the show. Your listens mean everything to us. Thank you again for following, subscribing, all of that here on the podcast or here on YouTube if you're watching us. Make sure you subscribe, leave us a comment, let us know how we're doing. And of course, if you are new to Underdog, you'll want to hop in. That FF advice code, we've got it there for you so you can come join along in our live drafts that we have. I've got them every Tuesday at 11 Eastern. And of course, all the fun we're going to be having the rest of the summer. So until next time, thanks for listening.